a wedding feast. And weddings during those times took days. In fact, seven days. That's how long a wedding would take. The party. And his mother is there. The Bible makes that very explicit, that Jesus' mother is there. And you remember that Jesus' cousin was John the Baptist. His mother was uh, Elizabeth. John had disciples as well. Uh, and, uh, you know that Jesus was a rabbi and he had disciples as well. Disciples just mean students. And so uh, Jesus had disciples, but John the Baptist had disciples as well. And John the Baptist was this radical preacher. He was radical, you know. In fact, the Bible says that he would only eat locusts and honey uh, in the desert. So he was, you know, there. Uh, he was gung ho uh, into this religious stuff, and uh, he was as radical as you could be, John the Baptist. No fun in religion when it came to John the Baptist's way of living his life. There was no party. And John the Baptist is killed by the time that the wedding feast of Cana happens. And John the Baptist's followers then join Jesus. So you have to uh, you, you, you have to picture the scene of the wedding feast at Cana. John the Baptist is killed. That's Jesus' cousin. And when we're talking about Jesus' cousin, we're, we're talking about his one of his closest family members. They knew each other very, very well. From the time that John the Baptist and Jesus were in their mother's wombs, they knew each other. That's why the Bible says, you know, the baby leaped when Mary arrived at the home of Elizabeth. John the Baptist leaped for joy. So they knew each other. And here, you have John the Baptist killed. And so, can you imagine the state of mind that Jesus is in? And he goes to a party. He's at a party with his mother. And he invites the disciples of John the Baptist who go as well to the party. Jesus there turns the water into wine and when we're when we're not just talking about making a little bit of wine he made something like 700 liters of wine that's a that's a lot of wine because each of those jars held a hundred liters each so I mean he really wanted them to party when the, one, when the wine ran out, when the wine ran dry, what ended at the party? Joy. There was no more joy, because wine brings joy, especially to a wedding. There's no more wine. There's no more joy. That's what the Bible's trying to say. They had a joyless time in their life. And why does Jesus turn the water into wine? To bring joy back to the party, to their life. 
that's what Jesus wants for us in our life. So there's no room for sourpuss Christians. No room for people who have vinegar faces or funeral faces. Uh, which is why it was so wonderful last night that Carolyn got us uh, the wine for our dinner. Thank you to her. I hope you all uh, are as grateful as I am for that wine yesterday. That was such a nice addition to uh, Thank you, our dinner yesterday. Great little detail. Yeah, thank you to Asher as well. And so, Jesus wants us to be joyful people in the midst of everything that we go through. We always have to be joyful individuals. There's a lot, that, there's a lot for us to be joyful about. Uh, God is in our life. And God comes into our life to bring us joy. definition of heaven. The definition of heaven according to the catechism of the Catholic Church is the presence of God. Where there is God, there is heaven. What is the definition of hell? It's the absence of God. Where there is no God, that's hell. So, you know, you don't have to die to be in hell. A lot of people are in hell right now, the way they live. And you don't have to die in order to be in heaven. God wants you to have heaven right now when you experience the presence of God. Let me put it another way. Jesus did not come on, down on earth in order to bring people to heaven. He did not come to bring you to heaven. Jesus came to bring heaven to people. He came to bring heaven uh -oh. to you. That's why he came down from heaven to bring us heaven. Not to, not to bring us to heaven. When we die, we're going to hopefully continue our heaven. Wait, can you grab that? But he wants you to be in heaven right now. So we have to reflect on that in our life. You know, if we're not experiencing heaven, why? You know, what is it? Is it my grief? Is it my depression, my anxiety? And I need to deal with it, confront it, because that's what God wants me to do in my life. So, one more point. We are going to be renewing the vows, all you married couples here. Going to, we're going to be renewing. Uh, you're going to be renewing your vows today. Uh, Adam and Eve walked in heaven. You know that before the um, sin entered the world, before they ate the apple. The Bible doesn't mention an apple, but since that's a common story, I like to bring it up. Just as fruit, but before. 
before they ate the forbidden fruit, there was no separation between heaven and earth. It was all the same. That's what it's going to be like when Jesus comes back. We're all going to be in paradise again. We're all going to get to live like Adam and Eve at the end of time. When Jesus comes back. And when Adam and Eve were around, they lived in paradise. And then they got kicked out after they sinned. And then the separation between heaven and, and earth happened. Do you remember that? You know, the, the, the difference between heaven and earth happened. We live now in, on earth, and heaven is where God is. The difference has, has, has happened. But after they were kicked out, they had to leave with nothing. They didn't even have underwear on, really, you know? They were, they had nothing and to cover themselves with leaves. <laughs> they only got to take one gift out of heaven. Only one gift was Adam allowed to take out of heaven, and only one gift was Eve allowed to take out of heaven. What was that gift? Each other. Each other. Adam got to take Eve, and Eve got to take Adam. Do you understand that? So you... <laughs> You are each other's gifts from heaven. So now you have to reflect on that because, you know, and that's not just for all you married couples, but for all of us who share our lives together, even on this, on this pilgrimage, you know, are you, are you a piece of heaven or are you a piece of hell? Mm -hmm. Depends on if I've had coffee. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times we can be pieces of hell. You know, with our attitude, with the way we treat each other, you know, with our impatience. Mm -hmm. um, Guilty. You have to be careful with the comments you make to people. I've even noticed some things on this on this trip that um, you know, just like um, really irk me sometimes. You know, the way we we can approach each other, we have to be very careful. You have to be very gentle and very tender. I try to be that way with every single person. That's the way I I imagine the Lord wants us to be with each other. So we are called to be pieces of heaven for one another. And find people to imitate in your life. You know, models, saintly and holy models. I have people in my life that I like to look up to. In fact, Paul says that in the Bible, he says, look to me, you know, be imitators of of me, Paul, St. Paul says. So, we are here uh, right now. 